you doing? Good, and you? I'm good, I'm good. I was yes. feeling red right now, but I might have to switch it. Alright. But no, what's good with you? Everything's good. Any any shoots? Didn't you just do shoots like what last week? You just yeah, shoots? so like, lately, ever since the year kind of jumped, um, I've been doing shoots like every weekend. Oh, so, damn. So yeah, um, because I work through throughout the week. So I've been doing like shoots um, every Saturday mostly. Um, oh, okay. Sometimes Sunday and stuff. But um, because it's a little hard. I guess I have I am like challenging myself to do that now because okay. before it would just be I would allow myself to just when it hit when I felt right to shoot you know when it right. was like when like every everything had to be like set up like a certain way you know my day had to go well and stuff like that to like shoot and be like all right I want to shoot or mm -hmm. I would have to have like a concept in mind do all these things not that now I don't have that I I totally do but um I've been trying to like challenge myself as a as a artist as a creative to like not just when I feel like it you know to, uh. to create and and allow myself to fail because I think before I want to create as much because I wanted everything to be ready for a good outcome right yeah but yeah, yeah. now that I'm shooting like consistently it doesn't matter if it's a good outcome or not it's like if it's a good process or not oh you know? okay yeah like if like I don't allow like other things to um, interfere with that so yeah that's dope okay. because um yeah i was gonna ask about that like you know what like motivates you like what inspires you to to do it because i look at like your photography and stuff uh -huh. and you know i was going through it and like the way you're shooting it's not just like you know regular like you know portraits and stuff it's like you're shooting with like an intent of it being like a, a piece yeah you know? like, so i have a variation now i think of like between like storytelling i also love to do like brand work editorial i like fashion a lot i do like a mix of all of that I, going back to the question what inspires me i think um to me it's not like what inspires me i think it's the people who inspire me mm. um a lot of my friends and like i could say like my circle they're all creatives in their own way you yeah know? um my best friend she's a writer and she's a singer and then Edder, you know, he's one of my good friends. He, he's like family for me. Like all my friends are like family to me. Um, and he uh, mentors me as well. He kind of, he was the one that like kind of took me and he inspires me a lot. He does a lot of crazy stuff, you know, in his own way and, and he's amazing. And he comes up with things out of like nowhere. And then um, Joel, yeah, he, yeah. he's awesome, man. He, he's awesome at what he does. Also one of my great friends and mentors. Um, my friends from Casa Rosita, you know, like, if you ever hear them talk about food, like they will never, I, I, I don't think I ever had like that relationship with food until I talk to them. Like they talk about their passion, you know? So right. to me, that inspires me a lot. Um, Anna, you know, making Loba, like man, spending just a couple minutes with her when she's creating, you know, or even when she's not, sometimes we just have like those deep conversations of, um, and just inspiration just kind of sparks. So I think I'm always consistently inspired because I just have all these people around me Right. that consistently inspire me you know or even um, i've always said like that um i have crazy dreams and when those become there's moments you know where your crazy dreams have like they're always a blessing but sometimes there's a moment where you just kind of get tired and they become a little bit of a burden you oh, know yeah. my circle keeps dreaming crazy for me so yeah. to me that keeps me inspired like i have a circle that i know that like they'll dream crazy for me even when i'm not dreaming crazy for myself creating yeah. art being a creative uh that doesn't have like any barriers as long as you're you're doing it you're putting your work out there you know um it's just very passionate people people that i admire people that um have spoken into me you know directly or indirectly even just with the way that they live the way that they carry themselves again just very passionate people um into me like that that's very inspiring yeah you mentioned like the casa rosita i see that you use the what her, so her name's Zani? Yeah. The girl. Oh yeah, I uh -huh. seen her. You use her for like photography and stuff. Oh yeah. And there was one piece that was really dope where she's using. She has like the Mexican like traditional uh, dress. Yeah. With the uh, like uh, I think it was like Black Lives Matter uh -huh. shirt or something yeah. on. So I thought that, that was so fire. I was like, oh, that's such a dope piece. Yeah. So that you know? shoe actually. Um, so she was like, um, I, or I was the first for. That was the first shoot that she ever like shot with someone, you know, it was the first photographer she ever worked oh, with. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, for a lot of people, you know, that's, I mean, I think for everyone, 
uh, that's that's a lot, you know, to be in front of a camera and just not know what to expect and stuff like that. Even for me, it was the first time that um, I did something so like high production mm -hmm. because we had like outfit changes and we had like people doing makeup. You know, Daniela, she's amazing. Um, and Daniela, she's she's the girl who who was your model. Or Daniela? So Daniela is there's Dani the model and then there's Daniela the makeup artist. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. Both. Oh, And then okay, Anna, um, that's how actually I met Anna and that's how actually I met Dani. That's mm. how we became really good friends from that shoot. Oh, really? Yeah. Um. So, and that's how I met Mike, you know, and stuff like that. So it was it was a really dope shoot, honestly. Um, it was around the time too of like or Black Lives Matter, you know, there was a lot of things going on so we kind of wanted to represent i think it was the first time that for me like um i wanted to integrate like my culture like that's something yeah. that i always knew going into photography like i wanted to make sure that people know that i was mexican you know right. and that i'm proud of that and that um even till this day i, I still try to incorporate that in one way or another because yeah. i think being mexican is more than just um well a lot of people see or just just the generation nowadays kind of like takes into consideration i lived in mexico for six years six seven years oh damn yeah, when i was younger uh -huh. how old were you when you were living out there um so i was around nine. Oh, damn yeah so when i left it's pretty good then. yeah i was nine and i came back when i was like 15 16. oh yeah shit. how was that yeah it was it was actually super drastic like you I know life, life is life is drastic over there mm -hmm. uh there's a moment where like i was just kind of like why am i here you know because i saw a lot of a lot of um poverty a lot of meaningless you know right. it was definitely like a culture shock you know to see that i think um you know for me um, my faith is very important and i always knew that like god god does place stuff in your life you know for a reason and um i never understood like why i had to go to mexico but now that i do what i do and that i'm so passionate of what i do like now i understand why you know because truly now it shows me that man our culture you know as mexicans it's not just again just the what we see now i think for me more than anything being those like looking back into those years as mexicans you know we make things out of nothing like yeah. we're all artists you know yeah. like our culture represents that um they don't have the resources as they have them here you know as in other words but they still make it happen dude like with nothing with man it's just the passion that they have and the creativity and and, and they have this go-getting mindset you know i mean a lot of people may not be able to see that, but for me, like, that was my biggest takeaway, that um, all these people are just, and I, I remember so, so clearly, like, so many artists just making jewelry out of, like, beans or, you know, making clothes out of, like, um, the most clay, that that's what you use with, like, with the, the, the corn, you know, when it's, yeah. like, dead at the end. Yeah. yeah, so it was just, like, so many things that now I think when, when I do photography, like, I apply, I apply that same, like, um, like, foundation almost, you know, being able to be in a in four walls and still creating something like what am i gonna build you know what i'm gonna make here so yeah that's crazy yeah because i went i mean i didn't go for that long i only went for like two years to uh -huh. mexico i was probably like i think eight or nine probably went when i was eight came and we came back when i was like nine or so uh -huh. and i still remember like how much of an impact that had on me you know what yeah. i mean like and, and it was the same thing because we're like my mom's from it's like a real like small like in the middle of nowhere town like mm. you know they call it like a rancho you yeah, know yeah exactly and, and uh the best life though yeah you know, so crazy like i, I had like the best time of my life yeah. but when i first got there it was like dude what in the hell is this like where am i That's you know, crazy, I know. you go I from it. like showers and yeah. bathrooms like all the things that you take for granted you know yeah like, like water that's yeah. just like a, a story, you know, electricity you have to pay, yeah you know now it's different i think i believe now they have all yeah. that but at that time this was like in the 90s like late 90s like to think in the late 90s they didn't have that like that's crazy to me like to think now like damn man, i was really showering out of this big ass barrel outside you know yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah so, so how long have you been uh shooting now so i started november of 2019 Oh, so wow, yeah it's been like a year and like two months yeah oh you're like super fire to be like that, <laughs> that <laughs> Thank like you. Light in it. yeah i think again it goes all goes back to um i had just just god man is so good and he always pleased people you know that were always um willing to speak into me you know so again like better like man he's been doing it for so many years you know right. so uh being able to learn to underneath someone like that you know that has been doing it for so many years I think it, it was kind of like an advantage point, you know, because there's a lot of people that um, that don't have that, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of people like 
that they just don't have who to go to and stuff like that but at the same time you have to be hungry for it you know you have to yeah. be hungry for for more and stuff like that so when Edder kind of took me under his wing like I mean I I'm will forever be grateful for him and his family um, along the way I kind of you know just uh discovered that Joel just had so much in him too and I was like oh my gosh I want what he has yeah. you know and, or what is gonna make like what what am I gonna do that my work is gonna be like yep Priscilla did that yeah you know so for me um Joel and Edder and you know again the people that I mentioned like they represent that to me so I was how'd you end up uh meeting up or knowing Edgar Edder yeah Edder was it Edder Edder uh -huh. Edder okay Edder, yeah. so I, we actually go to the same church oh okay yeah him him and I actually go to the same church so that's um that's where I met him and um, I served at my church at the time for to do social media and stuff like that, you know. And, and oh, they eventually okay. were like, hey, you know, you should take the camera and just kind of see what you come up with it. Because I was only doing, like, stories at the time. I wasn't doing photography. Oh, okay. So then I found myself, like, doing photography. And I was like, man, I, I really like this, you know. Like, this is, like, a, a different side of me. Given that I've never been artistic in all my life. Like, really? I have, yeah. Like, since I was a little girl, math was my favorite subject. Like, everything had a formula. Uh. Everything, yeah. Like, to me, it was just art was just nothing you know not at that time that right. was given to me so i was like i guess photography could be a thing you know um and then i kind of asked him, asked him questions and he kind of kind of put me in a trial to you know like he would give me but he wouldn't give me like too much you know uh, and like okay. would be like go on your own time like these are things that you can learn you know and yeah. intra cities has has a lot of that i think if anything you know there's always moments where you're like oh man it doesn't have enough um locations but honestly when you have it, you can have it anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you should, like, someone that's good will be good anywhere. It doesn't matter where right. you put them. Like, you can close them in four, in four walls and they'll start building a window and they'll start decorating it inside, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. And to me, that's the type of, of mindset that I go with my shoots, like. Like, how do you go about, though, like, choosing your, your models, you know, like. To me, I think I base it more off of um, people's, like, vibe, mm. you know. Um, I love shooting with people that have never modeled a day in their life and I love shooting with people that have been doing this all their life, you know? Okay, yeah. To me, it's, um, as long as we have a good time, yeah. at least I will take something memorable out of the shoot, you know? Yeah. Even if it's not the dopest shots, like, at least the energy was there. Again, the process, you know, it was well, there. I always wondered if it's like, as a photographer, is it like... Do you ever find yourself restricted because, you know, you deal with people like you, you know, is it challenging sometimes when you have something in your head and you can't necessarily reach out to that person that you have in mind or is that ever an issue or no? Um, yeah, it can be. Um, but I also think that that's what makes you, you, you know, and we could say like a good photographer, okay. um, if you're able to like go through that and endure through that. Okay. Um, it is challenging because not everyone is open, you know, especially when I was starting to, so many people said no to me. Really? Like, so many people said no to me. Um, and not everyone trusts your vision, you know, not right. not everyone wants to follow um, your lead almost and stuff like that. Um, so from that side, it was just like, but how bad do I, do you want it, you know? Like, yeah. for me, I wanted it bad enough, even more than the no's that I got. Yeah. And then... I think um, my personality is, is a little strong, you know, so sometimes mm -hmm. I can um, come off intimidated even when I don't want to. Right. So to me, it was really hard at first with like people to right. be like, hey, you want to shoot with me? Uh, I got <laughs> but you. I um, got you. again, I was able to shadow Edder a lot. And man, he, his personality, like, I mean, he's he's an amazing photographer, but I feel like everyone that has ever shot with him will always remember him from his personality. Really? And that's something that I took from him. Um, you know, that I was like, I even if my pictures are trash like i want people to remember like their time with me yeah you know so that there's a lot of things that i had to mold myself into to become like this person that i was like all right you know like i, I want to be that person that people remember for like having a good time or whatever that looks like you know um yeah no how do you go about um your you know like you're wearing like the Coover right now oh my gosh yes i love Coover, you know guys. That, that's a dope dope um do you go about like choosing do you just go about what you like or is there like more of a relationship with like brands yeah with brands because oh. you do quite a few that I've, yeah. I've seen on your, on your stuff I think um first I go based off like what they represent mm -hmm. and then I also like to meet the owner to see what they're about you know what's right. like their vision for for the brand or for their business right. I'm just always so attracted by like passionate people yeah so if people are passionate enough for their stuff then I wanna I wanna agree with that person, you know? Because uh, again, you. like yeah. this person 
like we understand each other like they have what it takes not to shoot with me but they have what it takes in like the industry itself you know i mean like hoover on something i've done some some stuff for drift you know yeah. in seattle like I just got their hoodie today. So, um again i don't think i've ever turned anyone down but i definitely am called to like the people that are very passionate that that they see that their purpose is bigger than themselves and their brand you know yeah. that they want to add something to the community not take away from it or use people to and so what what continues to inspire you like to keep going and like you know like what's um, your drive man i again i think the fact that i had mentioned you know my friends like they they motivate me a lot i see i see all these great things coming for them mm -hmm. and i see the rooms that they're gonna be in one day you know i yeah. i just have again i have they have their dreams but i have these dreams with them you know too right. so i'm always like what am i gonna do to be there with them um i was talking with jay the owner of coover last week and he mentioned something super dope that he was like you know i want my life to transcend like i want mm. you know to that i'm living something more more than than like what it is just now you know that it leaves something and like creating a legacy you know and stuff like that so i think also that's that's something big of my drive that like the next person that comes after me that they can know that it's possible yeah you know, that it's like it's for everyone that wants it you but you have to want it i'm also a creative director so mm. there's um a lot of people just don't know that there's a difference but there's a difference between just showing up and shooting mm -hmm. and then there's a difference of being a creative director making all the story and all the concepts and like all all the color palettes you know and stuff like that that, that goes behind the scenes like i i do that as well you know so um you do that with other photographers for other photographers or well, sometimes just... for brands sometimes for oh, my okay. own work you know but usually there's i mean when you work with like or just in other businesses you know mm -hmm. they're in higher company bigger companies they'll always be like a creative director and they'll be a photographer right um and to me i've kind of just always done both for myself um so yeah that's also like something huge for me that like i don't think I don't, I don't know if I want to do photography for the rest of my life, but I right. definitely know that I want to do art for the rest of my life, you know, whatever that looks like, even if it's creative directing for, for a huge company or stuff like that. Yeah. So what do you prefer, photography or creative directing? Man, I don't know. I think um, I think it, both sides would be, like, super dope, you know? It would yeah. be dope to work with, like, crazy creative photogra creative directors, but at the same time, it would be dope to work with, like, crazy photographers. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, I feel yeah. like. So is there like a like a dream shoot that you would have? Like if you could be like, oh, I'm going to shoot for this person or or direct, you know, is there a specific person or brand or something like that? Honestly, dude, to be honest with you, like, man, I think my dream shoot would have like just no limit like unlimited resources mm. you know um of clothes like locations but with my friends i think my dream shoe would would be with my friends because i know the vibes would be like immaculate like yeah. there's there's nothing like i don't know just being with the people that have always seen you grow you know and stuff like that that to me is very important like honoring those people yeah. um i mean yeah like shooting with any artist you know would be dope or for any big company you know like any fashion company or just business i think that would be super dope but uh, just a room where it's just me and my friends creating because mm. again they're all creators they all we all speak the same language like i think that would be my dream shoot that would be like, dope. yeah i can only imagine what would happen in that room you know of all these individuals like just man so i remember it was like spring or somewhere in the real this lavender field and i saw all these photographers like going crazy you know with the pink dress right, or like the flowery the dress and stuff, I was, yeah, yeah exactly and i was like Man, what am I gonna do there? That's not gonna be anything like yeah. that. So I made them, I made them dress all white and the other person like all black. And yeah. I was like, all right, we're just gonna try different poses. Well, I like seeing stuff that is uh, goes against the grain. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, same. Yeah, that, that to me, that's that, like. Yeah, when I see stuff like that, it automatically draws me to it. You know? Yeah. And that was a lot. Like that's a lot of stuff in, in your photography that I noticed. Like the first thing I was telling a little bit yesterday um, that I really thought that it was dope that all her pictures and, and yours as well. There's no smiling. <laughs> Every time, um, like after my friends shot with me, like the first time, every time they saw me and they were trying, they were shoot with me. They call it, like every time, like we're kind of like on set. We could say they're they're like this is the no smile zone. So yeah. no, no smile for Priscilla. <laughs> no. And um, it's because yeah, dude, I think there's deeper feelings. You know that um, you don't always have to do a shoot when you're at your best. Mm -hmm. You know, there's also shoots. I mean, I've shot a lot of times where I was like super down. 
-hmm. and i asked my model to recreate those you know like i've shot i've we've made people like just cry on the spot and yeah. capture that yeah like because to me those are deep feelings too you know like you can't just dismiss that yeah um and you're not always going to be at your greatest you're not always going to be happy you're not mm -hmm. always going to have a good day you know but if you love it you're still going to do it even in those moments and to me i think that like that signifies a lot i i'm to me again i'm not like the super smiling person mm -hmm. but i know like i have a lot of good in me so right. i think that's what i love in my photography too that like it's not your typical like smiley you know but it makes you feel something yeah and i, I like how you draw from your personal experiences you know to oh yeah for sure put that on um i think it has helped me a lot the fact that i've worked with other photographers before mm -hmm. to know what it feels to be on the other side yeah. i think um and like videography or photography you know a lot of people you hear them like no you know I, yeah. I, 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 the, you know i'm only on one side of the camera and that's behind the camera and stuff like that um which is totally respectable too you know but like i think for me it's kind of like how am i going to tell this person what to do if i've never been there right like you know like out of wisdom like yeah. how am i going to tell them hey don't be nervous you know if i don't know what it feels to be on the other side like i what would i tell myself you mm. know in yeah. that position um so i've always challenged myself to be like on the other side too of the lens to be like all right to come out of personal experience too because when i'm on shoots there's people that you know they get nervous you can see it and i was like all oh, right you know when i'm this side like i try to do this before or you know just um something that something that i always do is i always play music mm. like every single show and everybody that has ever really? traveled with me knows that like i just cannot show without music like um mm. i think it makes you in a certain headspace and i always make sure to ask my mom like what's your favorite song well there's sometimes shoots that already have a playlist that i create a playlist that i'm like all right this is the vibe that i want them to go for uh, um so smart. that also helps them get in like a certain headspace yeah. like, right. with anna when she's styling a shoot you know like even this last shoot um that i did with melissa uh that oh, i did okay. uh the blue uh, yeah. traje azul um and i wasn't able to make it there because she had her boys and stuff but we facetimed that her. was dope too that that whole uh where'd you get that that suit that was so fire. actually a girl posted on her story she had thrifted it and i was like oh heck yeah i, I saw the i saw the color and i was like we're gonna do something out of this and That's i was dope. with anna and i was with Danny, and i was like dude and they were like yeah get it so That's i got it um and then i did a model call and my friend melissa replied and she's a stylist too uh, she like, yeah but that show was actually really 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 dope um so we were at a junkyard okay um, yeah and we had already gotten there or whatever and uh i saw like that little spot where i shot and that the mm -hmm. light came in it was like right there at the entrance and then there was the whole junkyard you know oh, okay so yeah. we we shot there we were shooting there and we were, i was like dude let's get some some shoots here and she was like she's like yeah you know and we were joking around we were like watch this being the only spot that we shoot you know having like all <laughs> yeah. this huge location because you have a lot to work with there you know um and we just both, both started laughing because we were like just joking dude we went to the we shot there you know the pig the, as soon as we started shooting like the pictures were just fire oh, like everything man. was just happening like it was super raw it was super great and then we went to the rest of the junkyard and it just felt so flat really yeah it was yeah. just like because sometimes there's a point where as a photographer you also have to know how to not overdo it because mm. you also have to think about like okay once i'm editing all these pictures you know like i'm gonna want to post only a certain like i can't overdo it you know so i yeah. told her i was like Dude, honestly like over there is a spot like this which is meant to be mm -hmm. there and she was seeing it too she was feeling it and we had anna on facetime call the whole shoot <laughs> that's dope um, i don't know if it was it Alfonso? Was a, yeah the happy the oh yeah thing. for Alfonso, that's yeah, a on dope something. thing i gotta order that i still haven't ordered it but i was like oh, i gotta get one of those yes yeah, so, that was cool i like that how you had the the clothes just yeah. out there and the models in front yeah, of it just like, in the street like that was dope yeah the alleyway is like right behind his his shop oh really yeah it's uh, like right there so he had actually like had this idea you know about like making the shirts and stuff like this and i was like dude do it I was like, so i had been telling him like dude let's shoot let's shoot and i i always i love his stuff i i mean you know him as a person and his brother jay too like what they do um and he was like yeah you know let's do something so um he's like you know we can go to to a different location or or whatever you want to do and I was just kind of there and I was thinking about it and I saw his rack and I was like, dude, we should just hang all the shirts in your rack. I was like, and we can put your totes in the sides and yeah. let's just take it here outside. Yeah. And then he's like, really? And I was like, yeah, he's like, dude, honestly, let's do it. He's like, you know, I trust you. And to me, I was like, okay, yeah. this'll make or break, you know, like, <laughs> I better not mess this up. Yeah. No, that was yeah. fire. As long so, as you're trying to conceptualize something, you know, to me, poses are really big. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not just make them, not just make them stand there, you know, like yeah. make them look cool, you know, like, 
for their body language to reflect everything that their shirt is kind of like owning yeah oh, it, yeah exactly yeah. so so the poses helped a lot to make it look like it was something completely different every yeah. time i'm doing like stuff like that i feel like found like dang like uh, like i was born for this you know for this feeling right there i'm sure you you, yo, can, yeah. you can relate when you're creating and you're just it doesn't matter how what people yeah. think in that moment you're just it's like this is it know, right here yeah know. exactly yeah. typically with like businesses i like to meet up like a little bit before and see um if it's like based off like collections or like if mm. they're gonna do like just a shirt like what does it represent for them like what was the artist you know in that head what headspace were they coming from for me to like assimilate something like that you know is this just like it could go a lot of ways was the shirt just meant to be just to be repped you know does the uh. shirt mean something a little bit is it more deeper you know like stuff like that that's so dope kinda... that you ask those questions oh yeah not for a sure. lot of people would you know what i mean that's no cool. yeah because every artist i mean because they're artists you right. know an artist is always trying to make you feel something or they always came yeah. from a feeling because i understand that so you don't just get there and shoot you know you also have to to match that energy that the person just mm -hmm. even came with this piece from you know yeah at least for me that's very important because yeah. um if I ever wanted to shoot with someone, I would want someone to take that into consideration too. You know, thank you. You're, yeah. you're super ill. Thank you for taking the time. I know you probably have other things you could have done, but I no, thank you. you. Shout out to Mike. I just yes. had to, I just no, had no, to say dude, that. Go. It's because he asked me, so I had I had to I had to shout him out. Oh, <laughs> shout out to Mike. <laughs> yeah. Yo, shout out to Mike. All right. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Say hi to your wife. Yes, me. I will. Bye. Bye.